Welcome back to the Screen Savers. We're continuing our conversation with the legendary members of the Homebrew Computer Club. I call it a users group, but, but uh, Waz pointed out quite correctly, you weren't users, you were creators. There was nothing, you couldn't just sit down and use somebody's computer. You, if you wanted to do it, you had to make it. Tell me about the Salt uh, 20 a little bit, Bob. What, what, was that, uh, what was that all about? Well, first of all, the, the idea for the, for the company that I was with came in the very first computer meeting when I saw number three and saw all the documentation and decided to build I could our do own. that. It was only a few months later we decided to build our own computer. Yeah. And you named it after Saul, which we is We named it after Les Solomon, yeah. actually, the editor of Popular Electronics, because yeah. we figured by bribing him that way, <laughs> he put it in the cover. Sure it got an, and it, it actually worked. <laughs> so it was one of our successes. Um, we didn't actually, we were probably a year late. In the break, we were saying that a year was like a lifetime, and we were yeah. actually a year late delivering those computers. It wasn't until about the same time as the Apple II that the Sol 20 actually came right. out. But it was one of the very first computers that was completely integrated in one package, so that you, if you had the monitor on top of the TV, um, and it had its built-in keyboard memory, everything in there, you could just plunk it down on your desk and start using it. it uh, that is assuming you knew how to program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I didn't realize or you that. had a pirated paper tape. I didn't realize the connection, because I was also working for less... Uh, uh, and, and writing for Popular Electronics. But do you realize that we need a new computer club? I mean, things have gotten so static. And uh, even a Mac has gotten hard to use. They're complicated. Right. The, one of the reasons why I like the little machines is that the big machines have gotten too complicated to use. And now, but you've always said that. Yeah, and I still say it. You're still yeah. saying it. He's still <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, and he's still right. Yeah. And he's yeah. still right. Now, Harry, you start Crememco. Yes. And now, I, at the beginning, I said it's still going. It's it's going concern still? Uh, yes, although it's, we, we sold it to a large company. So right. it's been acquired and right. it's kind of lost some of its identity, but uh, uh, it's still a going concern. I remember those Crememcos, S100s. Oh, those beautiful uh, cages. Those were great. Those were great computers. Lee is still, I know, doing a lot with computers. It's still the comic, but also still uh, <laughs> spreading the computer. Uh, uh, gospel yeah, everywhere I, around the world. Yeah, I, I see an industry uh, that will develop in the third world, in the developing world, extending the telecommunication system through wireless, call it last kilometer. Right. Um, the systems can be built using open source software and 802.11 uh, that are cheap enough so that the people who are using them can actually own them and operate them. Uh, and that puts them not only into the local telecommunications grid, right. but also out onto the internet because Many of them will have relatives and friends living around the world, and hooking them up, uh, they know they need it, and uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun doing yeah. it. Steve is doing wireless too. I know you're interested in the wireless, and we shouldn't we sh we shan't mention well, well, what you're doing. A lot of the world's doing. doing wireless these days. Yeah, it's pretty pretty <laughs> exciting. So you're still in the computer industry, would you say? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I love baiting him. <laughs> I wouldn't say it. I'm, I'm in the, there's other industries that are related. related. So after the Apple One, the Apple Two, and of course uh, the world changed. I mean, that, that really that really kind of commercialized the thing and and took off like crazy. Did that change yep. for you guys? You feel like that? Oh no, it's not ours anymore. It's the world's. Or did you? Did you? Yes. Well, we started out too. The early products came with a computer and a programming language, just right. like the ones that right. the, the hobby computers. Not so different. Club. Yeah. And somebody had to sit down and read a little book and learn, oh, I can write a couple simple programs. We made it very simple back right. in those days. But then if you had a, a need, you fulfilled it by writing a program. Right. Today, you're told, here's what your needs are and here's what the solutions are, and you buy it from us. And Alan, it's all when you done. were working on it, did you kind of know that this is how, how important this was and, and what a big revolution this was? No, I don't think I did. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that. I just saw it as sort of instant gratification. Because you'd come from designing <laughs> big computers. And I ended up there, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Still doing and, it. And as we mentioned, Jeff is still fighting the fight to make these darn things a little bit easier to but, use. But at least people are still using Macintosh. And I can't believe it. It's been 25 years since they were released, and people are still using Macintosh. Well, it's wonderful. Speaking for myself, we love our Macintoshes. <laughs> and thank you, all of you, for the difference that you made. You changed the world. We are all uh, very grateful to uh, the Homebrew Computer Club. I know you guys are doing it for fun and because you loved it. But as beneficiaries of your work, we really thank you. It was really an amazing revolution that started in 1975 in Menlo Park. Stay where you are. We're going to come back. Say goodbye when the screensavers continue. You know, I thought I'd bring these young guys in here. With us old guys in the background, How, when, what year were you born? 77. Kevin Rose. 77? Oh, 72. So you can see that these guys, he was a baby. He wasn't even born when all this began. 
But you were saying about Marsh that what Yoshi's doing is not so very different. No, I think he should get the uh, Homebrew Club Medal of Honor for his work on for the mods. Mod. <laughs> that was exactly yeah. the spirit. I think of we have a quorum here and should vote on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I can't do the same as Lee, though. I have to well, say. I, I'll propose him for the Strip Phillips Screw Award for finding a use for something previously thought useless. Now, that's, <laughs> that's what I propose. The Strip Phillips Johnson. Screw Award. <laughs> do you have it mounted on a little, a little plaque there or anything like I'm that? I'm sure you we can arrange that. <laughs> well, talking about 70s, it was in 1966 that I built my first graphic input device. Wow. Wow. So, you know, it's really, the, which was a mouse-like thing? or it was, it, Well, it was built on a big drawing board and uh -huh. it had crossed wires and ten turn pots and things. Yeah. But, uh, but I needed to input, I wanted to input music. Bob was saying we're kind of st uh, stagnated. Nothing great's happened in, in 12 years or so. Evolutionary so. is what I said. Evolutionary. You th where's the next big thing coming from? Anybody? Suggestion? Mm, from me, of course. Jeff Raskin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give, does he have an award sure. for that, Lee Felsenstein? <laughs> no, Raskin's his own category. <laughs> well, there's so many other people who are part of the a Homebrew Club, and, and I wish we could have gotten you all on the stage. For those who are watching at home, we'll do this again. You come back. We want you all, right? Thank you. And Gordon and everybody else should come back, and we'll do this again, because it's, uh, it's really fun to have you. Pretty neat, huh? It's cool stuff. Isn't it amazing? Yes. Yeah. All right. We thank you for joining us on this edition of the Screen Savers. Kevin Rose, Yoshi, we're going to be back next week. We've got a great week of shows. But uh, it's just nice once in a while to take a trip back in time through memory lane with Lee Felsenstein and Harry Garland. And, uh, and uh, i got to get everybody in right order. Bob Marsh, Jeff Raskin, Alan Baum, and Steve Wozniak. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Screen Savers. Night-night.